She was a gambler. She was a drinker. She was an adulterer. She was a political mover and shaker. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Georgina, the fifth Duchess of Devonshire. When she married William Cavendish, she became the most famous woman of her age at the forefront of politics and fashion. And maybe finally now, it's time for her to take her place in the roll call of fame of LGBTQ plus heroes. So subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's go back and let's discover the hidden history of Georgina, the Duchess of Devonshire. I'm here at Chatsworth House in Derbyshire, which was the home to the fifth Duke and Duchess of Devonshire, Georgiana, Nee Spencer and William Cavendish. Now, the Spencers could trace their ancestry back to the 15th century and the Cavendishes could trace theirs back to the 14th century. So when these two huge aristocratic institutions came together, it was the Hello Magazine moment of 1774. She filled their London home, Devonshire House, with bright young things and the political movers and shakers of the day. Sometimes she influenced how people voted. Sometimes she influenced how people dressed. And some of those fashions were in fact politically motivated, like wearing feathers to show your support for the Prince Regent. But sometimes they were just excessive and a little bit crazy, like her. For example, she wore a boat in her hair, or she wore a wig that was three foot tall, so tall in fact that she had to sit on the floor of her carriage as she was transported from party to party. But her salons were boozy affairs filled with gambling, and she racked up millions of pounds worth of debts in today's figures. And she hung out with the political elite. She had affairs with two of the most influential political men of her day, Charles Fox, and Charles Grey, with whom she actually had a child. Her relationship with her husband, William, was troubled and tempestuous. She was frequently confessing to millions of pounds worth of debts. She was being punished, exiled, returning, making up, and then doing the whole thing again. So whilst her relationships with men were troubled, and transient, there was one constant relationship in her life, whilst it had its own emotional problems, was true and consistent. And that relationship was with a woman. Lady Elizabeth Foster, or Bess as she was known, was the daughter of the Earl of Bristol. And she met the Devonshires in fashionable Bath in 1782. Now, she was a penniless divorcee, but quickly became their closest companion. She was not the first woman with whom Georgina had intense relationships, but she would be the woman who would last the rest of Georgina's life. Now, we'll never know the full extent of the relationship between Georgina and Bess. What we do know is that when Georgina died, she left all her private papers to Bess who may have edited them to praise herself in a more flattering light. And subsequent generations edited and redacted a lot of the private papers. And this is not unusual. Many of our LGBTQ plus ancestors' descendants edited papers and removed references to same-sex relationships so they could preserve the reputation of their ancestor. Now, if you want to know more about LGBTQ plus ancestors and their relationships, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you're new here, leave a comment below, say hi, and I'll come back to you and say hi too. But back to Georgina and Bess. So what facts do we know? We know that Bess had two illegitimate children with the Duke, both of whom were raised in the Devonshire household. So she was having sex with him, whilst also being Georgina's best friend. And this relationship and setup lasted for over 20 years. When Georgina died, Bess would go on to marry the Duke and become the new Duchess of Devonshire. This relationship so incensed Lady Spencer that it caused a rift between her and her daughter Georgina. So there was something in the relationship between Georgina and Bess that meant she wanted to keep her close and I believe that was because they were in fact lovers. 
Now, some scholars have argued that Bess was blackmailing Georgina over her enormous gambling debts. And while this may be true, and she may have had some leverage over Georgina, Georgina had many opportunities to get rid of her rival, if in fact that's what she was. Let's think about it. Bess was penniless. Bess was a divorcee. Bess had illegitimate children. Bess dated and was dumped by powerful men. And Bess was exiled abroad to have her illegitimate children, but was welcomed back with open arms to Devonshire House. So what was it? Perhaps we have to look to their letters, which are intimate and passionate. Now, language in the 18th century was certainly more floral than it is today. But if you read those letters to each other, there was deep love and deep attachment there. When Georgina died in 1806, Bess wore a lock of her friend's hair for the rest of her life. Now, hair was often given as a token of love. Now, we can't say for definite whether Georgina and Bess were lovers. I think they were. And they wouldn't have recognised terms such as lesbian or bisexual. But I like to think that Georgina, who is at the forefront of politics and at the forefront of fashion, was also at the forefront of sexuality. And for me, she's an LGBTQ plus hero who shows us today how to define the relationship that you want on your own terms.